Okay, back with the cell about three days later. I've just charged it up and it's sitting there. We're gonna see how long it stays, um, at a reasonable voltage now. I've just disconnected it, slowly dropping. Don't know if we're gonna get a drop on this yet. But it's looking like it's holding 2.1. I've taken it out of the liquid just to see if um, it will hold while it's not up in there. So yeah, it's just dropped then. All right, I'll get back and time it. Back with an update, I put it in the cell out of the water, I mean, in that tub out of that liquid. It's um, holding 1.9 for, I think it was two hours or something now. I've got the counter still going on the phone. So it's looking all right. The other day it held 1.6 over two days and then the last couple of days it started to drop in level to 0 0.8 volts. So it may be leaking through the membrane or something to do with it soaking in the liquid, maybe. So I'll see how long it holds, it's 1.9. And um, I'll update later. Oh, there, 1.9. Okay, back. It's been 12 hours. The cell's just been sitting there after a charge of a half hour. And it's down to 1.78 volts after 12 hours. That's not too bad. I think it still leaks with the membrane. It's around about the same in the liquid. It doesn't sort of matter as much. And for a short circuit, put on the milliamps. I don't think we'll have 100 in there, milliamps. 70 and I'll find the lead for the motor and I'll see if it does run. Oh yeah, we deliver 42 milliamps after 12 hours. That's not um, too bad actually. And the voltage is coming back up slightly. I'll do another check in a couple of hours to see where that voltage comes back to. So the cell looks, um, hang on, we'll see if it changes in liquid. And we'll do a milliamp short circuit while it's in the wet liquid. All right, so the liquid does make an improvement. We just got a hundred milliamps on a short circuit. Holding a hundred. Hmm. So the extra manganese dioxide seems to make the voltage stay higher, I guess. Nothing different to this cell compared to this cell. But this one here, that will um, dissipate within an hour to two hours. Well, that one's been 12 hours. Um, another test I'm going to do, I'm going to um, swap the membrane and put it on that side to see what happens as well. So we're at 1.6 volts and a short circuit of 100 milliamps after 12 hours. Yeah, that's good enough for me. Alright, I'll um, get back with a later update. I'm back. It's uh, 17 hours now and it's holding 1.79 volts in the liquid. So its leakage is about the same. It was um, dropping to 1.6 over two days the first time I tried it. And a short circuit, 200 milliamp range, 121 milliamps so it's not looking too bad that um bit of foam must be the density of the amount of material on the cell which actually holds the um voltage because like i said before this thinner one doesn't do the same so i'm gonna now swap the um, membrane to the other side and see what the difference is if there is it might 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 swap the um, polarity of the cell over I'm not sure though that's a guess all right I'll set that up yeah okay, I swapped the um, membrane to the other side of the cell and the active carbon materials on the negative side this time and for a short circuit the voltage is dropped a bit but that's probably understandable I've disturbed the cell so short circuiting uh, we're way less and dropping massively, but I'll um, give it a 15 minute charge 
This is just out of curiosity what happens if we um, reverse the separator onto the other side. So theoretically that should have really just changed the polarity of the cell. But we have the graphene one on that side. Two strokes in the G. Okay, so we'll um, connect the charge. And we're going up pretty high. I'll just change that to the 10 milliamp range. Oh, it's only two, 270 milliamps. And that's about 30 seconds. Okay, all right, and I'll do a short circuit. 240 milliamps. Hmm, who knows if it's an improvement. Well, we're holding 1.5 with the motor connected. And 60 milliamps. That's actually maybe looking better. I'll um, <clears throat> give it a 15 minute charge and put it on the data logger. That should tell us if reversing that. Maybe there is an order. The carbon needs to be on the negative side perhaps. All right, I'll get back and after a 15 minute charge. Okay, we got a very unstable charging curve and it's going for 26 minutes. I'm disconnecting now. Okay, I'll just connect up the data logger in the other order. So this test is to see if having the active material on the negative side is better, worse, no effect, or anything like that. So we're 1.9 volts, so we're dropping actually. We normally sort of hold two at this stage. So I'll start a discharge of 50 milliamps. If it is better, it should get more than, I think it was 40 milliamp, I mean 40 milliwatt hours with the active material on the positive side. So we've already dropped down to 1.8. Oh, I'm dropping fast. Ah, oh, we just went up in voltage. Ah, oh, it's only by 0.1. It just looks big on the graph. Point oh one, I think. All right, I'll let that run, see how long we get. And I don't think it's gonna be anywhere near 30 milliwatt hours by the looks of it, but could surprise us. Okay, coming up to the final run of it, it's only 16 milliwatt hours, so that's right down having the carbon active material, I should say, on the negative side of the cell. Now the cell's in par with this one, which also has active material on the negative side. So what I'll do now is um, put the cell back to how it was and give it a test run. I'll give it another 26 minute charge and we'll compare the results. And I think the other way is going to work better. All right, I'll set all that up, give it a charge and I'll get back. Okay, with the cell back to its original form, I've only given it a 20 minute charge, it was just shy. It's holding its voltage already. It's proving much better. And for a run, we'll do the same load, 50 milliamps, starting now. It does drop a bit, but we'll see if it goes down to point eight. OK, 
The other charge was um, 26 minutes, but that's overcharge. But that one have detected it too badly, I don't think. Ah, I'll be back. 24 minutes into this run, it's definitely an improvement with the uh, active material on the positive side and the membrane on the negative side. And we're at 27 milliwatt hours already and we're 0.9 volts. The next test will be wrapping the negative completely sealed. And we'll see if we get leakage on that test and also the same as power density, I mean. Uh, I'll get back when this runs so we get the total amount. Alright, finished some time ago. I don't know when, but it went for 51 minutes, 42 milliwatt hours. And the recovery is 1.3. So now I'm going to wrap the negative cell completely up and see if we get anything of an improvement or, or no improvement. Alright, I'll set that up. The uh, negative electrode on this one has been completely covered in membrane just to do a test to see if that mitigates leakage, voltage leakage. Okay, we've got 1.3 volts uncharged at the, the um, plates we used in the last experiment. And um, I'll do a 20 minute charge and get back. Okay, back after the charge, 20 minutes. 20 minutes is overkill because it starts climbing back up in the milliamps. Holding its volts okay. And running, it should get about 40 milliwatt hours still if it's performing as well as a single insulated layer. Looking okay actually. It's performed a bit better, I think, when it was new. But, still looking okay. Alright, I'll let that run and I'll get back. Back, we got 50 so far. It's still running, but it should be cutting out very shortly. And we got 0 0.007 to go. It seems to be holding in there. Well, so far, it's 44 milliwatt hours. Doubt it. It might click to 45, but somewhat a bit of an improvement in its run time. Yeah, so the next test will be uh, charging it up for 20 minutes and leaving it idle. It should still be 1.7 volts in 15 hours or something like that. Or hopefully better with the um, cell totally wrapped in, or half the cell, the negative side, wrapped in the paper membrane. So we finished. Uh, yeah, 45 milliwatt hours, so it's, I think the last run was 42, so a little bit out of there here and there, and 50 minute run time. So I'll um, give it a charge up, and then I'll let it, I might, I don't know, it'll be too much on the laptop. Um, yeah, I'll get back. Okay, back, I've had a 20 minute charge, and now I'm going to, that was its charge curve. I'll reset the charge curve. And I'll monitor the discharge for a few hours. Yep, we'll have we got our voltage line. All right, I'll get back in a few hours or so. The following graph is a um cell leakage graph over four, four hours and 50 minutes nearly. So it's dropped from two volts to 1.4 over nearly five, five hours nearly. And for a short circuit on the cell, It's 100 milliamps on the 10 amp range. So I'll switch it over. And clamping now. 83 milliamps. 
after four hours. It's sort of, uh, it was better the other night actually. Might recharge it up and leave it out of the water and see the voltage tomorrow. And I'm not sure if the data logger is actually draining a bit of power because it was uh, logging its um, voltage back to the curve. It's a strange sort of discharge curve. There was no amperage draw, just the um, data logging of the voltage. Uh, so I'll charge it up and uh, see how it goes tomorrow. Okay, it's the third day since the cell had a charge. It was sitting out of the water, it dried out. We had 40 degree days yesterday and um, it was down to 1.3 so I dumped it back in the tub and I'll set this on the 20 range. We're at 1.5 volts and I'll put that on the 200 milliamp range and we'll do a short circuit after th three days idle clamp that. We have 80, jumping around a bit, 80 milliamps after three days. I'm thinking the um, the membrane is actually not that great. I'll have to um, look at investing in some cell guard by the looks of it. And we'll see if it runs the little motor. Just, it's doing 0.9 volts, 33 milliamps. So I'm not sure if it's holding power, or it's, that's the uh, power in the cell. So I'm gonna wrap this cell up. I'll keep it alive, just as well as, as this one, and see how long they actually last. And we're still holding a bit of power. So overall, the cell's not too bad with the um, bit of foam in it. Foam seems to work not too bad. Maybe because it holds a lot more. I could probably structure the foam a bit better so it doesn't squash and put less carbon actually in it. It was only the first test example, so I'll try it again sometime when I get some more materials. And it's still holding 0.8. Actually, we might have found a level that sits at not too bad. Sitting at 28 milliamps, fluctuating from 0.8 to 0.9. Oh yeah, I just seen a drop in voltage then. Well. I'll put this cell to rest and um, think of something else to make. It's coming up to carbon making season, but I have to um, give the furnace a burn first before without anything in it to slowly bring it up to temperature. But it's actually too windy and too hot today. We're expecting 39. And I'll do another short circuit after that little run. I'll clamp it on and we're delivering 45 milliamps. Strange how it's fluctuating like that. Could be the membrane. Most likely is the membrane. It's only homemade on paper towel. It's not very um, professionally done at all. The mixers could go up or down. Pause size, everything. So I'm actually impressed with this one, but it does have 5.5 grams of manganese dioxide. So it probably should perform a bit better than that, maybe. But that's a short circuit still. And we're at 50 milliamps. I have no idea why it's going up and down like that. It should just drop. Must have um, problems. And I'll base it. I'm gonna put some liquid in the top of the cell. Oh yeah, we got a slight improvement adding extra liquid. 
the water levels dropped a bit. I need to add probably some distilled water to about, I think the level was there. So we dropped about 10 mil over three days. So the cell looks like it actually makes or produces 50 milliamps. Okay, thanks for watching.